really important truth that we don't understand in the church, um, in the world. I don't think people understand it. I think they think we're just human beings and this is who we are and we grow up and that's how it is. But there's this really deep truth that we become what we worship or what we love. In other words, part of our original design was to be a reflector of God. That's what it means to be created in the image of God. And so that design creates in us this ability to reflect what we worship or love. So we were created to love God and to reflect His image into the world. And when we don't do that, when we sin, when we turn from God, when that break happens, we go on being reflectors of what we then give our love to or what we worship. So for example, um, if you love sex, money, power, you can literally see people becoming more like that thing that they love or worship. People who love money start to, they will always be thinking about it, never having enough, going after it, um, becoming like it, seeing things through, everything through dollars and cents, you know, just saying money. Um, people that worship power, they're going to feel always fearful and always wanting power. They're going to look for power. They're, there's going to be a power struggle in their life to overcome, to be powerful. Same with sex. They're going to be pe seeing people as sex objects. So whatever you turn your heart toward, your heart, not your head, because you can be thinking about God in your head, but your heart because you were created to love and worship God. And I think that the greatest, um, there's a, a beautiful parable of this in um, Beauty and um, the Beast. Because that famous fairy tale is um, the, the young man, this handsome prince who rules over domain, much like Adam was given, um, turns his heart, I mean, he's, he, he's given an opportunity to love and he doesn't, which exposes the sin in his own heart in the very beginning. And what happens is that the whole castle comes under that curse, okay? And um, you see this beautifully in uh, Disney's uh, movie, but even more so in their Broadway play. Because the inhabitants of the castle that were once human beings now are becoming something. Like uh, Cogsworth is becoming the clock. And Lumiere is becoming the candlestick, and one of the women's becoming a wardrobe. And so all of the uh, cast of characters in the castle are becoming something that they were never created to be. That is a great picture of what happens, what sin is doing to human beings. Because they turn their heart from worshiping, loving God with all of their heart to something else. And so, um, in the Broadway show, I love this, I love this, because there's this song, and it's not in the movie, just in the Broadway show. There's this song that the characters sing when they get their hopes up that Belle might be the one that breaks the curse. Because the curse will be broken if the prince can learn to love someone sacrificially, love outside of himself, and be loved in return. So they sing this song, we'll be human again, we'll be human again, and then they say, we'll be floating again, we'll be gliding again, stepping, striding as fine as you please. Like the real human does, I'll be all that I was on that glorious morn when we're finally reborn and we're all of us human again. And I think in that last stanza, you, you get the gospel. You see, we'll be human again on that glorious morn when we'll all be reborn. We'll be finally human again. And one of the, one of the great truths is that you become what you worship, as one author put it, either for your ruin or your restoration. For when you turn from idol worship, because that's really what it is, putting an idol, something other than God in your heart, when you turn from that and you turn 
to the worship of the one true God, you begin to be transformed into his image. You begin to be conformed to him and you go from glory to glory to glory. You are being transformed, but what's really happening is that you're becoming truly human again. For there's only really one truly human and that's Jesus Christ. That's, that's Jesus. He's the one truly human. He's the last Adam. And so the profound truth of the Bible is that you are either in the first Adam or in the last Adam. You are either an inhabitant in Adam's domain, becoming like him, uh, idolatrous, fallen, turning to other things, or you are in the last Adam, Jesus Christ's domain. You are in him and you are worshiping him and you are becoming like him. So like the Disney characters, when the curse is broken, they become this, the glorious creatures that they were. You see at the end of the story there, they become who they really were. They're restored to that. And that's what Christ is doing to us. For all of those that are in Christ, he's restoring to who they originally were created to be as image reflectors of God. And each one of those reflections is going to be uniquely glorious. All of those characters aren't the same. You know, each one is individual. They all have their personalities. But the twisting that happens with sin when the curse comes shows. And if the curse lasts, they're confirmed in that. Versus the story ending in Beauty and the Beast when they're all restored and there's a happily ever after. And that's what I love about it. I love that the truth of the gospel is embedded in these stories and that there is a deep truth there that we, we become what we worship and that's what we give our heart to. That's what we give our heart to. That's not what we know in our head. You can be going to church. You can be doing the right things. You can be going to Bible studies. But if your heart is over here and it's being conformed to the things that you love so much more than God, that's the danger. So becoming what we worship. Become like Jesus Christ.